and the approval of the minutes for the October 13th meeting. Hopefully you've all had a chance to review them. Is there a motion and a second to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the okay, minutes. Is there a second? Second. Yep. Any uh, errors? Any errors or omissions? If not, all those in favor of approving the minutes of October 13th, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. The update on the non-motorized trail. Uh, we all left the last meeting with some assignments to do here um, to gather some information as best we could. And uh, so, how do we want to handle this? Well, I can start by saying I'm still waiting to hear back from two cross-country ski people. Okay. And the gentleman, uh, I'm trying to get in touch with the gentleman with the uh, camera in the sky. I'm still trying Okay. To, the drones? Yeah, yeah. The trying drone to make guy. Connections the, with big him. brother is watching. Right. Yeah, I keep trying to, trying to make connections with him. Okay. But it's been difficult. So I will continue to try and All right. communicate with emails through everybody when I figure it out. Okay. I had, as I had indicated, I would get in touch with uh, with, with Court Hansen, who for, who's not only a neighbor but for decades has been in charge of the North Country Ski Trail Loop, uh, and contacted him about coming to our meeting. And unfortunately, he couldn't do it. But I did ask him a series of, but thinking about it, I, a few days later I asked him a, some long, a series of questions, and there could have been probably a lot more, but I wanted to get it, in, which he very politely answered back, which I then forwarded to everybody. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure that I was successful in kind of really capturing the tone of where we wanted to go, uh, but based on, on what Mark is doing uh, with, the, with the maps, I was trying to get a sense if there was specific topography that would really help in laying out the maps, laying out the trails, at least for cross-country skiing. And he, and he did answer that. Um, and also we asked him about the cost, not that we were going to be doing it, but at least give us a sense of what, what, what kind of expenditures we're talking about here. And uh, as he outlined again, you're really getting into some money if, if anybody wants, really wants to get into this big time, look at some bucks. Um, and the first question I asked him was, could you use these trails could they be multi-use? In other words, cross can these teachers also be hiking trails and, and horseback riding and so forth? And again, he answered as, you know, as long as it's, even the motorized wouldn't hurt as long as you're not doing it during the ski season. But, uh, you know, you, you should run into a problem there. But again, I think it would depend to some extent on how well the trails are maintained. But again, this would be somebody else doing it, not us. But I think it would be important for us to know just what's involved here and the <coughs> question that we would want to ask somebody who may be interested. So that's, that's my contribution to this. Uh, and I know, Sandy, that you had also sent along something, uh, a car, a discussion you had with somebody with a... Uh, Equine trails. Yes. So why don't you kind of go over that a little bit? Yeah. Um, first off, I had contacted Burt Meadow Stables. Yeah. Um, and they recommended that I get in touch with the White Mountain Horse Association mm -hmm. and another one of my contacts also recommended that association. The president of White Mountain Horse is the owner of For Your Paws Only, Kathy something or other. So I sent her an email. She forwarded it to somebody else who forwarded it to somebody else. <laughs> and I eventually ended up with, um, or heard back from, an Avis yep. Rosenfield. Yep. And she is extremely active in <clears throat> many of the uh, equestrian type trails and multi-use trails at state parks. Specific two in particular are park talks away and mm -hmm. Deerfield um, we had a long conversation then I can't you off a bunch of stuff for me to rec remember so I asked her to put it in writing <laughs> that never fails never <laughs> fails um, one of the things that she did say was that uh, 
if we're going to allow mountain biking, yep. that that be kept separate from equestrian because the mountain bikes tend to go quite a bit quicker. Yep. And come up behind, if you don't want somebody coming up behind a horse fast. Yep. Knowing okay. that from experience, personal experience. Um, it's just too dangerous for everybody involved. Hikers and equestrians can coexist quite nicely. Um, she did mention somebody that we talked with, uh, somebody by the name of Patrick Hubble, and I have not talked with him yet. Because he's involved with the uh, trails and a volunteer coordinator for the, for the trail systems at many of the state parks. Mm -hmm. She talked about maintenance, uh, she talked about design, and she also suggested that we charge a fee. For oh, horseback riding. For use of the trails in order to help cover the cost of the maintenance. Okay. Maintenance should be fairly minimal, but it does need to happen occasionally. Also, you want need to think about Closing the trails off at certain times of the year. Now that's interesting, Cindy. Why did, why did she suggest that? Well, I'll tell you. During mud season, yeah. you definitely do not want a horse on those trails. Okay. Especially if there is any possibility of mud. Does it increase the chance of a horse being injured as well? It could, but yeah. primarily because you're going to end up with deep ruts, okay. uh, hoof prints. Mm -hmm. It's just not good for the soil. Mark and I do the same thing when it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> not really before I said it. Yeah, we need to close the trails off, you know? But just, first of all, it's common sense. Yeah. Uh, if the trail is extremely well drained, then it's probably not going to be a big issue. Mm -hmm. But if it's a, anywhere where you're going to get any, any mud, you just close them off. Okay. And I mean, I've ridden at Bradley Palmer State Park, which is down in Massachusetts, in Topsfield. And every spring, you know, for a period of about six, sometimes eight weeks, depending on the year, the trails were close to the horses. You know, it just, I think say common sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, we should probably get in touch with this Patrick Hummel. Uh, yeah. Now, now who's Patrick again? He is a state volunteer coordinator for, for the trails. For a lot of the trails, yeah, for trail maintenance. In the state parks only. I believe so. The one question I would have is. If we open things up out here and we put in trails, um, in the state parks, because they're managed by the state at least, I'm not sure who owns them. State, uh, they fall under DREAD's jurisdiction, yeah. DREAD, what used to be DREAD. Yeah, but so they, is the property physically owned by Dred or is it it's owned, owned by the state? The, it's owned by the state. state. That's what I'm at. Yeah. So they can charge fees. This property <coughs> is not. It's owned by the county. But could the county charge fees, or would it fall to this Ossipi, the town? Good question. And um, one of the things Ava said was to. Check out the legal, that that, you know, that legal aspect of it. The other thing is, um, if you have rules for the trail usage, how is it going to be monitored? How is it, what are you going to do with people that have infractions? You don't want to make it a misdemeanor, but do you want to charge a fine? Just things to think about. I have a question. Yeah. 
just to clarify, would this be something, this the horse trails thing, would that be a county thing or would that be like it's, everything else where it would be someone else coming in to run trails? These are public lands, right? Yeah. Unless you have a way to physically, this is my opinion, unless you had a way to physically barricade those trails from any usage, aside from whomever that business is, how are you going to stop it? How are you going to stop somebody well, else from It's like in? that with, every, with the cross-country ski trails. If we do that, it's going to have to be someone that comes in that if they're running it on their own, their, th their job will be to monitor it. Mm -hmm. And it would be someone else's job to monitor him, as it would every aspect of any operation happening on county land, I would assume. Well, if you're talking about some farmer coming in and leasing some acreage to grow crops that is a smaller contained area um, whereas the woodlands which is where most of these trails would be it's a lot harder for somebody to yeah. to have a could be a lot of entry points yeah there's a lot of entry points to that so I think it's more of a public access space, like it is now, in a way. But that's me. That's my opinion. Maybe there's a way to do it. I just don't know. Well, just to try to answer Dale's question, the minutes that we just approved, on the first page, the next to the last paragraph, says the committee needs to make it clear that the county will not be running the resulting activities. Right. And so I think all along we had talked about, regardless of what it was, was cross-country skiing, horseback riding, or anything else, that these would be activities that would be leased out. I think that was leased our thinking. Leased out or just made available? Well, if, if they just make it available, then that means that the county is not responsible for the maintenance of the trails and everything else. That's what I don't know. I thought we had talked about if we did things like hiking trails or whatever, we would get, you know, volunteers or the Boy Scouts or something mm -hmm. to maintain it so it wouldn't have a direct cost to the county. But then we also talk, to focus on the horseback riding for a minute, then we also talk about perhaps uh, utilizing some of the existing buildings and, and lease those up as stables. We did, yes, we did that, um, I'll tell you, I have not looked at the, the barns. Yeah. But I do know that to renovate a, a existing barn mm -hmm. to equestrian standards, you could, someone could spend, easily spend close to a quarter million or more. Mm -hmm. well, depending on size. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I know because I. Yeah. I know what some of these costs are. But there again, if you have someone that thinks they're gonna come in and do a bang up business of boarding well, that, and trails. That. Yeah. I think but, that's where we our direction is more than. More than just opening up to horse trails and leaving it governed by the county, I think. I was kind of under the impression today we were talking about trails, yep. and whether we could actually have trails that people could use. Yep. And then in a couple of weeks or whatever, <laughs> we, we, we would talk about having people come in and run a business that would utilize the trails that we thought we could have. Because I'm not sure, um, I talked to the Forest and Lands and the New Hampshire Trails Bureau, mm -hmm. and they're coming in two weeks to talk good, to us. Good, good, yeah. um, thank you. And uh, 
I also went and spent a day hiking some boundary lines with, with the forester, and, and she was talking about some of the pros and cons of different types of trails and whatever. And I think what we may have is um, places where we can have trails, but are they going to be long enough? Do they go uh, places people want to get to? Mm -hmm. are there, can we go and have views? Can we, you know, are there places that we, we should not go because of the animals? I mean, she showed me a bear tree, which I had never seen in my life, and all the hours I've spent in the woods. Um, right almost beside 28, when the bears come and leave their markings and leave messages for each other. And, and it was like, wow, I'd like to show it to everybody, but then again, you can't show it to everybody because the bears won't use it anymore. People are there, that type of thing, you know. Um, so I, you know, that I think is, first and foremost, is can we put trails in? Where can we put them? And what type of trails can we put in? And then we can talk about, wow, you know, if we can put in 10 miles of horse trails, is that sufficient for someone to just come with their horse for the day? Or is that enough for a company to come and utilize mm -hmm. that trail? You know, I'm you're essentially, you're talking about renting the trail system. Right. Is, is, are we going to, you know, we don't know now, but. If we sit down and we find we got 10 miles, is that yeah. enough? Or do we need 50 miles yeah. of trails? You know, I know if you cross country skiing, or at least if I'm cross country skiing, three, four miles, I, I'm good. That, that's a nice one for the day. Uh, my cousin, on the other hand, wants to go 15 or 20. <laughs> so th those are the types of things I don't, and I have the map here of just, um, where the skitter trails, where when they vlog, they put in trails, which would reduce the cost of initially getting them. But then again, some of them are not um, conducive to, say, for horses, because they have, you know, wetlands during the, yeah. the wet season. And you know when they logged it, it was during the winter, so everything was frozen or it was dry or things like that. Um, also, the New Hampshire Bureau of Trails um, does motorized, and uh, they were going to look and see if there are any skidoo trails that come close. That because there's not enough land here to run a skidoo around in a circle, yeah. actually. I guess. I don't skidoo, so. But if this would be part of being able to connect to trails, you know, and uh, the skidoo clubs do a lot of that. The, mm -hmm. the designing, the, the out, you know, laying out the trails and the maintaining the trails and things of that nature. I don't know if the horse club would do that. That's a, a you know, a question. Um, I had talked with Avis about attending the meeting on the 10th. Unfortunately, she's going to be on a mule that weekend or that day. Going down the Grand Canyon. Oh, oh gosh. Wow. Yeah. That's an awesome trip, by the way. So she that. weighs less than 200 pounds. Yes, she does. Okay. Yeah. Oh, is that a requirement? Yes, it is. Oh, my. Do we have any idea at all? What kind of a road or trail network that we that we already have here on the county on land? I mean, maybe just nothing more than old logging roads, but right here. Right here. Oh, okay. All right. So, do we know how many say miles we have of, of, of trails or roads that, that could easily become usable? Well, here again, it, the use depends upon uh, what you want to use them for. Okay. Yeah. And uh, whether they are built. When I spoke with the man uh, from the Lands and Forest, mm -hmm. he said, properly designed trails for hiking and, and, and bike, biking too, I think, require very little maintenance if they're designed well. Uh -huh. yeah. But, you know, if 
and he said that was one of the problems with old logging trails and things because you know instead of going zigzagging at a certain pitch so they don't pick up the water that's coming down the hill um, whereas he said sometimes when the loggers come with the skitters they, they, they use a steeper angle and the water if you were using that as a hiking trail the water would wash mm -hmm. the trail out in the spring or things of that nature. I, I expect you probably know a lot more about water erosion than I do. But. That's one thing that Ava's talked with me about too is that um, you need to switch backs if you're on hillsides. Um, a, it's to avoid erosion, and it's a lot easier on everybody. That's why we have these switchbacks on for highways, right? Right. Now, I'm not sure about mountain bikers. I think they like going up and down. <laughs> I may be wrong, I, but I don't. Don't look at me. Mm, I've never done it myself. So. I'm not conducive to a bike seat. <laughs> um, the other thing that the man um, yes. from the lands uh -huh. and forests said is hiking trails can be a minimum width and horse trails should be twice mm -hmm. that width or a little more, um, which causes you need to, to have a different type of a crown in them uh, because horses like to ride side by side. Yeah. And there should be room to pass one horse to pass the other. It's not like a hiker that can, you know, kind of back into a rock or something. Um, and if you allow carriages or strong carts, they need to be wider still. Uh, that would be almost roadwork, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, like the uh, little uh, farm road that we went on um, when we did our tour. Yeah. That's sufficient. Two couldn't pass on that. Two carriages could not, no. But carriages tend to go single file. Okay. Good. <laughs> Silence. Now, the people that were going to do the overlays, could they take a map like this and make an overlay out of it? We can find out. I'll take a look at it. Because although this is marked um, with things like, um, well, with some wetlands in here that are just marked, and other water, which I don't, open water, I guess that's a pond. On the GIS, they're all, everything is a that's uniform grid. So it's a matter of whether that gridding system falls into and scales the same as what they have. And that looks to be more of a rough rendering. Yeah, and, and this also shows the different um, current use and non-current use. Does anyone have a cleaner copy of that? Um, the edge I point that if we could get a digital file of it. This um, I got from Wendy and had them copy downstairs. Yeah. So I'm not sure if she has a, I, I think this may have been her own kind of personal copy that she was sharing with us. But what she did say was that they were planning on a, I, I guess they've had a plan over time to cut and things. And, there's something up in the top that needs thinning or cleaning or whatever. And uh, because I'm preambling the lines with her, we were going to do that next up there in the corner. Um, but the man from the state said that if when you're doing any kind of forestry work, if you kind of have an idea where you want your trails, and with the forester and the forestry work, you can make it a little more compatible. So move the, the skid trail, you know, so it isn't quite so steep sure. or uh, I don't know um, where they have a landing. I, I well you you've been here before when they cut the they I've never said I've never been on this this farm for that operation or on our property. So because I don't know if they skid it all out to the road or if they skid it to a landing and then 
build a road for trucks to, to go over. I know at my house we built a road to the landing for the big trucks, and then it kind of spider webbed out from that. Um, Wendy would know that. She would. She should know that. Yes, yeah. and she's going to come to our next. Uh, Mr. Spoil, 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 um, had contacted Wendy and invited her. She replied that she could, she would come. Yeah. Uh, to help. I think there was a copy of his email. I don't know if that went to everybody or to. Well, you got the one you sent out. All right. There's tremendous information on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's why I'm wondering if we could, if we would make an inquiry, if we can get a clean copy, and then scan that, or have someone like Kinko or here. They they have high resolution, and high resolution because that's a wonderful map just to have. Mm -hmm. That we put on digital form, and, and then see if we can apply it to some of the other mapping. But I think on on the face of it. it it won't, it won't drop as, a, as an overlay, but we'll find out. Right. Um, the other thing I found out, I kind of already knew it, but um, when we were preambulating, pre there were two pieces that hadn't been uh, flagged and marked. Um, there are features that aren't on any of the maps, not the G. Uh, it's when it shows the mountains and the topographic. Topographic. Um, there were two brooks over there. Beautiful stone brooks. I mean, they're old and they've been there a long time. And they're before this rain, they were still running. So I assume that they're year-round um, brooks. So I'm wondering how many of those we're going to find that mm -hmm. aren't on the maps. But they may show up on those granite. Green, right? Because those are done from overhead. So, but um, I find this fascinating. I know just over there, that little piece, um, there were two eskers in there, very small eskers. They're not much wider at the base than this building, but they're really steep and really tall because the line, of course, went up and down mm -hmm. to a little. By the time we got down the second one, it was like, man, I hope we don't have any more. <laughs> but, uh, and I don't know where Esk is typically gravel. Sand and gravel, and that's where we're going to get our maintenance gravel from. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be a, an excellent, it's easy, close to 60. Easy access? Yeah, it's close to 28, and you know, as long as there's nothing else over there. Because this was, the bear tree was way over here, and that was down the other way. So we could get gravel and I'd have a place to put my salt lick, you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that too loud. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of beach now. <laughs> the, um, I get, I've, I've got some, a couple questions here listening to this. Uh, all right, we the next meeting we're going to be having people come down and he would give us more information. Uh, but wouldn't it help if, if we actually knew what we, were, what we had for an inventory as far as the trails go? Uh, I mean, what, what we really have to offer, some of the conditions of those trails, uh, listening to what Amanda, you, and, and, and Sandy, and, and what I got from Scott, from, uh, from, from court, uh, while hiking trails may not require too much to, to, to build and create, once we get into other areas there, it, it, it may require an investment on somebody's part. Uh, so it would, it would uh, I would think if, if I was sitting here and you were trying to entice me, say, to, to be horseback riding or a, a cross-country skiing, I think I would want to know just what are we talking about here? What is it that the county's putting on the table? The miles of trails, the condition of those trails, what's going to be expected of me if, if I'm thinking of leasing that for a for profit business? What's going to be expected of me? Uh, and 
and it seemed to me that if somebody says, okay, how many miles are we talking about? I wouldn't be able to give them an answer. Mm -hmm. What are the conditions of those trails? What's going to be expected of me to bring those skills up to a standard that, that now I can use? I think that probably this gentleman from the forest and lands uh -huh. would, would mm -hmm. be able to help with okay. that. And, and uh, Mark's maps would yeah. be yeah. Uh, invaluable, I would believe, in helping to determine yeah. that. And Wendy, who I believe has traversed most of the property at one time or another. Mm -hmm. um, Couldn't we flip that group of questions around instead of having it them asking us, what, this is, again, I might be wrong here, but 794 acres, the way I look at it, is a blank canvas. If you want to do this, you tell us what you're going to do, and we'll tell you if it's okay or not. Kind of general, but someone wants to come in cross-country skiing, and he says, well, I've walked the property, I need to put X amount of dollars in to have X amount of kilometers of cross-country ski trails. This is my business plan to you. That's kind of the direction I was thinking we were going instead of the other way around where they're asking us what we should do, looking to save money. We're asking them what they're willing to do, I think. And I, 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 I understand where you're going, but let me play the devil's advocate here. All right. If, if someone comes in and I say, and, they, and I say, okay, we want to hear a business plan from you as to what you're going to be doing, uh, as Kurt made reference to and others, you know, someone would have to perhaps make a, a major investment, a commitment to, this, to, to create these trails. And they're not going to do this, if they were willing to do it, they're not going to do it for just a two or three year lease arrangement. They're going to need a lot of time to get that money back, and, and, unless those trails are, are successful beyond their wildest imagination here. Uh, right. And so, uh, and, and again, the tone of the committee is we've made it clear that don't look for county money here. Don't look for public funds to basically do this. This, this is on your watch. Right. Well, let well, me ask, Mark, okay. am I correct in, in just thinking that that's a good approach for us to have in looking at county funds? Probably, yeah, there's, there's nobody writing a check to do those things. But I, I tend to agree with what Dale said and what I've already heard you say, that if you bring these people in here and they say, I'm involved with cross-country trails and I need X number of acres and, you know, a, a, if I was building a train, I need a 2% grade. You know, they, they've got things that they need. And they tell us, you know, these are the sort of things we need. And, and then we work together to see if that's going to work or, or they go out. But, I don't think we need to, because we can't do that in any short order. Say, you know, we have a network that's here this big. We can provide them. We can provide them with a map like that, and they look at the others. But I, I think we're looking. We're drawing out a conversation. Is this something that makes sense? They may look at. Say, who said no? This makes absolutely no sense here. Then you know, maybe someone will be excited. You know, right. let, let, we'll work with them. But I don't think we have to do all the work up front for them. So, and your number of years, yeah, that could very well be. They may, they may say they're going to spend ten thousand, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and they're only pulling in a few dollars for a user fee for that day. So they may need a five-year, they may need a ten-year commitment. That's not an issue. Well, as, as long as it's not costing have, the county any money, right. as long as we have performance standards and they right. don't have complaints, yep. then yep. I don't, I don't think that's an issue. So, it's like with. Barn renovation. The same Somebody idea. Somebody would want probably a 25-year or more lease. I personally don't see a problem with that if it's not costing the taxpayers of Carroll County any money. And yeah. if after 25 years they're making money and the more kickback to the county, kickback probably a bad word. <laughs> the more uh, rent, the w rental income, whatever. Uh, that's term you want to use there, <laughs> Ready. sure, Ready. Uh, would increase. Uh, yeah, I'm all for it. As long as it's not costing any money, I don't see an issue with giving them 25 years, 15 years, whatever they decide in their business plan. 
There Let's is, just use the land instead of just let it sit there. There is one drawback because the land. I'm sure there's more than one. Well, <laughs> financially, yeah, because the land's in current use, and once it's leased, it comes out of current use because then it's some sort of it, it doesn't meet whatever the criteria are for current use. Are you leasing it out, or are you? There's got to be as long as that. I mean, I can go on somebody else's current use property and use it for whatever is legislated in that current use terminology, and you don't have to take it out of as long as yeah. I don't think if we built a horse track like Salem, New Hampshire, we'd be able to keep it in current use, but. <laughs> but. You know what I mean? As long as it's being used for whatever is stipulated in their current use guidelines, I don't think we'd have to take it out of current use. And that's something we would need, that was, mm -hmm. would need yeah. to be checked out before we yay or nay it. I, I, have you looked into that, Amanda? Is that true? No, I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. I do know that on the, like the hay fields and things, yeah. when you rent those out, that becomes a rental. And then it, the tax rate changes. Um, I have a friend that, that rents the land in one of the counties north of here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what she pays is what basically yeah. she pays. Well, I think for that's something taxes. we want to look yeah. into. Can yeah. we get the county attorney involved in looking into that to see uh, if this land is leased or rented out, if that changes the status of the current use? I'm not Am sure I she would your... know anything about that. That's she's a criminal lawyer. I'm not <laughs> sure that, that comes into that. Is she the deputy? Dale's, Dale's correct in that you know there's different levels of, of what yeah. your current use rate is. Uh -huh. If you don't allow this activity, but you allow these activities, you as a landowner get get more of a credit. So uh, I can go on your land. You can go right. on mine. You can hunt my land, and, and mm -hmm. that doesn't matter. You can hike on my land. But then there might be a wrinkle that if, if someone's you know making profit on that, so it's I I, I think there's I think we can get those answers relatively easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's ultimately going to become a um, a decision of the town of Ossipee because oh yeah, it's their land. So well, and they have probably some rules already in place about what people what you can do on property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it's in current years, yeah. My, the, what I equate it to is haying fields because I would, I would hay other people's property, and they would get, say, they would get a dollar per bale I took off the hay field. I don't think that ever changed their current use rate. You know what I mean? I don't think if I bring my horse to your field and I ride on it, that's in current use. It's going to change that rate. Unless but, I charge you. I, read, I, I charge you to use my pasture or whatever. Right. I think that changes. But right. I'm not you sure. build a road to gain access to, the exactly. road has to come out. So there, there are there are things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think those are easily answered questions. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. those are the things we'd want to know. It would be very embarrassing if we sit here and start to discuss and negotiate with people and find that, that they're all of a sudden, you yeah. know, we, we've got some issues here that we haven't even considered yet. Well, part, part of someone is considering a lease, any costs that bring land out of current use is, is borne by the lease or we see, yeah. um, we see. The only thing that I see that would in any way interfere with any kind of trail systems or, or whatever business or whatever is the wetlands, you know, and you have to stay away from the water system. <coughs> Uh, I'm not sure what the law is, but you have to stay a certain distance from public waterways. Uh, the same, I think, may be true of the septic field. I, I don't There's, know. Yeah. But those are the only things, uh, you know, the, uh, the wetland type areas. Although I do know there are places where they have actually made animal viewing platforms in, by wetlands. How do you get the animals to say that? Well, you know, <laughs> moose are really pretty good at just <laughs> walking around and saying, take my picture. But, um, so, I, I mean, those are the types of things. But I, I don't see any drawbacks. Um, 
you know, the people that I've spoken to about being beheading some trails have all seemed to be favorable. Um, I, you know, one of the comments is, well, maybe they won't be so crowded in July <laughs> as, you know, other places. Now, just another question. We have focused here basically on, on non-motorized use. Um, have we ever considered or do we want to consider motorized use? Not this meeting. Yeah, I think we talked about that, but we're going to do it at a different, we're doing it at a different stage. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, without question. It, there, there are no four-wheel, four-wheeler trails around here, are there? There are, yeah, there are, and but a lot of a lot of the people that give the rights for snow machines to move across their property do not give the same rights to uh, motorized ATVs and side by sides and so forth. But I believe they do have some access over in the Pine River forest over there, and there are there is. This, some classifications can move through the uh, in freedoms at the, what's it, the trout pond property. There's several hundred acres over there. Limited number can move through there, I believe, but we'll find out. So, but I if Chris is Chris Gumash coming? Who's coming from uh, Trails Bureau? Yes. Yeah. Chris. Well, no, I don't think he's going to come. I think he's sending. Uh, What's his name? Sparrow or Sparrow? Um, to kind of represent both motorized and non motorized. Okay. And what, what day are they coming? They come in the tent? Two weeks, yeah. Two weeks. Let's see if I can Chris Kamash and just talk to him about it. Anything else, Amanda? Uh, yeah. No, I think that that's it. I did um, contact, I tried to contact the person in Conway that coordinates the maintenance of all the trails, and I think you may have spoken about him. Um, Which trails? In the North Conway area. What kind of trails? I, I did not but, um, talk with him or talk about him. All right. Um, I did not have any luck in reaching them. Um, the lawyer also is involved in that, and I couldn't, he never got back to me again. But we had contacted before when we were looking for members of the meeting, members of the commission. Uh, name escapes me, sorry. What is it, we, as we've talked to these people, and, and at the next meeting having them here, what is it? What, what do we want to get from these people? Is 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 this is this doable? What the cost would be, yeah. and do they have any interest? I think feasibility is the main focus at this point. Yeah, is it is it doable? Yeah. You know, first of all, I, is it possible to put trails yep. on the property yep. that are going to be sensible trails, if due to you know restrictions and wetlands and whatever. You know, say that the only place for a horse trail is from here to here, that may not even be sensible. Right. On the other hand, um, you know, if it's if it can go someplace and have a nice view and you know something that people would want to to go and see, uh, the castle in the clouds, people like to go trail riding up there because mm -hmm. it's beautiful. You know, there's lots of views and things. Um, things of that nature. Um, and I think uh, there's some historical things that people might want to go and visit, or you know, hike by, or ride by, or whatever. I don't know, these, these bodies of water, I don't know if they contain fish or not. Um, things of that nature, I, I don't. I don't know, I haven't spent enough time out there to tell you. I do know there's bears out there. <laughs> they have a tree. They have a tree. And you, and you got the tree to prove it. <laughs> I have the tree to prove it. Um, 
also, I do know that there is an animal crossing right on the Wolfboro Ossipi line out on 28. And whether we had talked about um, animal trails. Corridors. Yes, we did. Corridors. We did talk and about that. that seems to go right straight up by the BFP. Yeah. So, uh, There's the highway. Across the highway. If we get one more no, clue, I know where this bear tree is. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? We've almost got a pinpoint. <laughs> and and Wolfboro has a piece of conservation land that butts that, too. So, you know, whether they have trails in that conservation land that could connect oh, yeah. into our trails, you know, that's, a, that's the other thing. We might have our own little yeah. mini Appalachian Trail, you know. Well, you know, just, and, and, and I know we're talking non-motorized, uh, well, no, but, I, but I was reading an article just the other day uh, that a number of years back the city of Berlin made an expensive oh, land purchase that they opened up to ATVs and snowmobiles, and what they have done is they have networked that and tied that into a very extensive snowmobile network up there in the North Country. Mm -hmm. And there was an article shot a while back uh, that is having a major economic impact in the greater Berlin area. A major economic impact. Like the fact rooms and meals tax in Berlin has taken a significant jump up because people are not coming up to there eating meals there, the lodging. Yeah. So, so I think when we take a look at this, I think we ought to, you know, just based on, uh, I'm not even going to call it anecdotal because it's evidence that's really out there, that what we're discussing here today, whether it's non-motorized or motorized, this has the potential to have a major economic impact in this area. I, I, can, I agree with you, and I think that um, we already have the Castle and the Clouds area yep. as a draw, but people are, are used to going there for hiking and biking and whatever, um, and possibly we could become part of. Mm -hmm. uh, I yep. don't know how far it is as the crow flies. Mark, how far is it from our land to the uh, castle? Yeah. It's closer than you think. But uh, do, the, do the land, or I wonder if there's any, what would be really nice would be if you can start getting interconnections. Yes, that's where I was going, Sandy. The, um, and I think that's what the man is trying to trails. Yes. Because if, then it would really make sense. Exactly, exactly. If, if, if our trail system can tie into others, yeah. And, and all of a sudden, it's no longer, and I'm just making up numbers here, it's no longer an uh, eight or ten mile bike hike across country skiing. But now all of a sudden, it opens up. This could be a, literally a day trip, you know, regardless yeah. of what it is. Whatever the, the, the trail use is, it networks into something far more extensive. The, um, I don't know enough about the properties here to have any idea how close those things are. Well, I, I think when I think when the trails people come in, we're going to start getting a good feeling. Good. And Amanda's point that this ties into a Wolfboro piece of property. Yes, that's, kind that's of, fabulous. We start we start pulling those together and see where yeah. this goes. Yeah, exactly. And, and maybe it, then maybe we yeah. only need a a private owner's link to get us to another trail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know. And the other thing is, everything is politics. If, if, if we can begin to involve other groups, other entities in this as well, and they see the advantage of this thing, you know, it changes the whole nature of the county land ownership. Well, it's possi possible, and that's all it is, is possible, yep. is that this might be a, connect a missing link. It, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. But that's something we, we, we should be pursuing, yeah. to get yeah. a sense of just where this land is in, 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 in the grander scheme of things here. One of the things that I'm hoping to get from the meeting in two weeks on the 10th is a good description of the characteristics of a good trail for various activities. Um, what is what does that the trail surface consist of? How wide is it? What's the drainage like? Um, does it need, what's the minimum distance to make it worthwhile for a snowshoer, a cross-country skier? And what about the dog mushers? Mm -hmm. Mm 
-hmm. You know, the sled dogs. Yeah. Um, the same with the horseback riding or the carriage riding. And that may not make sense, so much sense here, but you know, what, what do we need? What do they need? Well, and, and you know, I think that there is a tremendous potential here. It, it, uh -huh. It's kind of a little overwhelming to me. Um, in fact, I'm thinking that if the experts come in and they look at, they, they'll be able to say, oh, no, nah, you know, I, I'm really sorry, but you're not going to be able to snowshoe here. But you're going to be able to what's it, flat tire bike. Fat tire. F fat tire bike. Okay. Not a flat tire. <laughs> they also make a beer, that group. Oh, yes. I, I apologize to everybody, but Let's I. Let's stick to the topic at hand here now. I, I, I do need to leave. I will leave this here if when you are done, you can leave it right here because I believe that. I, probably going to be in the other next time it's used. So. A quick question before you go, Amanda. Yes. Uh, is there anything we can do between now and the next meeting to find out just a sense of, of the networking? What is out there? And you've talked about it, uh, land in Wolfboro that, that kind of connects with this. What's going on there? We've talked about the uh, the castle in the clouds. I mean, is, is there a network there? Is that something we could tie into as well? What that about may show up on the map. Yeah, what about some, some snowmobile trails? Is there anything, is there any sort of a network here, crude or elementary, that we could tie into? I think if we had that kind of information at the next meeting, it might kind of start to fill in a little bit and give us a better sense. Does anyone hear snowmobile? The only snowmobile is snow snowmobile is snow Sometimes at uh, gas stations or convenience stores, you can buy a little booklet with the yeah, trail right. network. Trail system, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, I have, don't I have know a trail. how many trail groups there are. Is there, is there the New Hampshire Snowmobile Association that might have some maps well, they, you know, by we, region? We can, we can ask um, the Trails Bureau when they're here, but the typical answer is that they leave the the map of the network to each group that they sponsor. So mm -hmm. there's the scrambler, oh, oh, scrub, scram, oak. scrub oak scramblers, and then there's a North Conway group, and there's one for Ossipy and so forth. And they allow them then to print a, a map that they make revenue from. Yeah. And you can, the only place you can get that map is from them. Uh -huh. But we probably only cross two. So when he's here, he can tell us who that is. Okay, all but right. But I was at a Freedom Conservation meeting last week and they're updating their inventory which I believe they're all supposed to do over the course of five or ten years and us and their consultant had presented um, the town with a map which was the updated map of the where the extensions of the snowmobile trails were and so forth so if we can get in touch of the uh, Ossipi which would be Joe Deegan is now the uh, chairman and see if they'll see if they can give us what they have for mapping. And we get a hold of Wolfboro and we ask them because their 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 properties in the Ossipi sure owns an awful lot of property. Yeah. Their mm -hmm. conservation. So if we get some of that map, yeah. we can start filling in a lot of Exactly. And, and I'll I think go to Wolfboro that's and I'll get Okay. Get All right. I'll talk I'll talk to Joe D. So, be, so be between now and the next meeting, let's see if we can start to fill in some of that information a little bit. And, and as Mark says, when the trails people are here, the state trails people, we get additional. But I think that might help us if, if we know where we are in relationship to another joining or abutting trail networks. It, it just gives us a greater focus, I think. Right. Amanda, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I have a question for Mark. Okay. Um, well, a comment. I tried to go on to uh, the granite, the Hampshire granite. Yep. The most information that I could get out of it was population. Well, they, no, there's, there's. Yeah, I know, yeah. that, I know there's all but this you, other you stuff. Want, you want to know how to get there? Um, on the link end? No, 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 I've got a link. Okay. <laughs> um, maybe you have to have an account or something? You, you need to go in through an ArcView viewer 
Okay, and I don't and have that, one of those. No, but they'll, you can, they'll send you a link for free for that. Okay. And that'll just, that, that won't allow you to change anything, but it'll allow you to see most anything. And it used to be the towns had to have a licensed copy. And now they have a free, and then you can go in, then you can explore it. I think you can ask for what layers you're looking for. Okay, yeah, I, I went in through uh, UNH. Yep. Um, followed up on the thing from Ava, so. So go, go right to, there, there's a group there, which is, I think it's Granite, and it's through UNH, yep. and ask for their person. They, they, they'll help you all to death. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. it's, it's an ARC view, ARC viewer, and uh, there's free. Yeah. What else do we need to consider for on our next meeting in which we hopefully will have some people here? And do you have a sense of the questions we want to ask, the direction we want to go in here, what's, what's the information that we're looking for? I think we usually leave that in your able hands, don't we? <laughs> That's a great plan. Yeah. <laughs> All right, if, if we have sufficiently beat that to death, can you move on in the, in the, on the agenda? I, I want us to, to, to review and think about the process here, uh, because if, if, if this first one, looking at the non-motorized use of the trails, it has taken us four weeks to get to where we're actually sitting down with people. And looking at the list of things we want to review and discuss, if it takes us four weeks each time, we'll be years into this thing before we're ready to do anything. I, I, I think we, we've, either, we, we've got to either start to consolidate some of these things. We've, we've got basically five categories. Either we start to consolidate some of these things or, or, or maybe take a look at some of these and see if these are things we can do ourselves uh, or what because, I mean, as you say, there's going to be four weeks involved just in, in, in the trails. Um, we're, we're, we're not running out of time, but the fact is that this is going to become a very lengthy process. So, what are your thoughts on this? Am I panicking here needlessly, but I just think of the time. Well, it was my impression, yep. or my understanding, that we were talking about the trails. Yep. Because we felt that that was one topic that we could do some work ourselves. Yep. Many of the other topics, I know personally I don't feel that I have anywhere near enough knowledge and a month would not be anywhere near enough to get educated okay. about the feasibility of some of these other topics. That's what I thought we were going to go with to a consultant for. But a number of the things in the recreation area, we thought we had enough expertise in the committee with some local experts to be able to handle that. So okay. I don't think we're going to be at, uh, to a situation where it's going to take us five years to get through this list. OK. I, I thought this was a labor of love, Steve, so <laughs> I don't know where we were here. I, I, I agree. I think, I think we will work longer on some things that, that that we can work with and we'll come to some understanding if that makes sense or doesn't make sense and then we'll then push on to the consultants. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't be overly concerned. I'd, okay. I'd stay on course the way we are. Let's hold, let's hold a few meetings. If we fill the room, fantastic. If nobody shows up, we've sure got an idea of where we go next. So. Right. Yeah. And we all still like each other, so. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I go, well, we thought we did. Mark, is there something you know you want to share with the rest of us? <laughs> Are we up against a deadline? No, we're not. No, we, 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 no, no, no but, so? <clears throat> but just, <clears throat> but a couple of things here. As, as we've talked, or as I mostly, mostly have talked about, the funding cycles are, are, is, mm -hmm. is something that we don't control at all. And so 
we have to kind of catch those cycles as they come around. Whether it's whether it's other funding agencies or whether it's government agencies, we have to catch those cycles. And um, and as far as the federal government goes, they are now in their new fiscal year. Their fiscal year starts October first. So I'll just cite USDA. So now they're going to be starting their funding cycles. And and we know uh, that you submit an application for some funding. Uh, it can it could take months before they make that decision, and then it could be additional time before the funds are released. So I'm just thinking we we want to be far enough along here in those funding cycles that that we that when an opportunity arises we can jump on it. Uh, so not that I'm panicking and pressing the panic button, but I think we want to be aware that while we don't want to rush this thing for the same token, we don't want to feel that we've got all the time in the world because we, we, we may miss out on funding cycles. Can we apply yes, for funding without having our RFP? Well, let me restate that. Can we apply for funding and not have 100% of our ducks in a row? I, I don't know. What, I, what I've been told is that these funding cycles are very competitive. Oh, yeah. And maybe others here have far more experience with this than I do. It's not just that they're all sitting there panting, waiting for us to submit the application because they, they can't wait to write the check. It's going in very competitive. And I think, and if that is true, I think the more things we left unsaid and undone, then that, that weakens our application. I think we want it to be as complete and as comprehensive as we can make it to, to the best of our ability. Okay, so part two question. Yeah. When through these organizations, if they've already started their fiscal year, when do the RFP, when does the RFP need to be written by? We'll, we'll, we'll get notifications uh, as, as to when, when that funding cycle begins. And, I, and again, I can just use e USDA and maybe others out there, but they will periodically come up with something and say that, you know, if, if value-added agricultural production, they'll say, okay, uh, th this money available, you have to get your application in by December 15th. So we need to talk to these people then. We, we need to get a sense. We have to be watching much more carefully when some of these funding cycles start. Okay. Now, now the thing is, as, as you know, I have been connecting with USDA in talking to them, uh, but when I had talked to them, their new fiscal year had not started yet, so they had no idea at all how much money they were going to have, what programs they may be getting involved in, and what I was told is that they will keep me in the loop as to what is going on. Are they? So, well, I haven't heard anything yet. I think, you know, I'm sure that I'm not the only one on their list, so it's going to be up to us for me to, to touch base with them again. Okay. Um, but these things can happen quickly. You know, they may say, okay, here's a program that we think ties into exactly what you're looking for and what you're trying to do, and you have to get that application in by January 1st. So then we've got a rush. So even though we can sit here and say, we've got all the time in the world, in some sense, our timing is guided by things that are beyond our control. And I'm not saying we, we shot change what we're trying to do here or anything else, but I'm just thinking, if, if we can begin to if we can begin to accelerate accelerate this process a little bit, I think we should be open to that. that that's all I'm saying. Okay. They don't want us to take any shortcuts or anything else, but I just don't want us to say, say okay, n November 10th we have finished this. Now what else do we want to take a look at and start that four week cycle all over again? That's all I'm saying, Sandy. Yeah, Steve. Um, one of the things that I think we need to define to ourselves yeah. very clearly is for what purpose are we going to be applying for funding? That's what we're trying to determine now, isn't it? No. Well, are we applying for funding to pay for the feasibility, uh, feasibility study. study? Okay. Yes. yes. Then we need to find out, we have to make sure that whatever of the programs will pay for a feasibility study, because some of the programs will not. We know that. Yeah. I, I've been told that already. Yeah. That getting money for a feasibility study is going to be tough. <laughs> yeah, it is. The, um, hmm. 
Um, what might make more sense while we're waiting for okay for funding cycles to cycle around uh, and for us to figure out which program would be a good fit would be to have a dual track schedule. Okay, flesh that out for us. Well, we already know that we're probably not going to uh, feel comfortable, well, we would probably want somebody else to look into um, the feasibility of an agricultural education center, mm -hmm. or a high school ag center, or, you know, some of these other educational centers. And we probably um, need to have somebody else look at some of these other things in the other area, the solar farm, the dispensaries, and the you know, event venue items. So if we have a framework, an outline, if you will, mm -hmm. for the RFP, then we can start getting that document, portions of it completed, and then work on one of these other little areas at a time. At the same time that we're having meetings on the activities that the committee feels that we have expertise enough to handle. Mm -hmm. So that keeps, we've got two tracks going. I was, I was, uh, my memory isn't always that good, but when we took a look at this and, and realized that through the, 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 the listening sessions that there was a lot of ground to cover, that what we felt is that there may be a lot of this ground that we really could do in-house. Mm -hmm. As you had mentioned, Sandy, there may be enough expertise out there in, in, in the field itself that we wouldn't need to spend a lot of money getting that information. We could, we could, we could get it ourselves and therefore eliminate that as something that we wanted done in the feasibility study. Did I, did I misread that? No. no, you did not. Okay, all right. You did not. But, do you think we have or would have sufficient expertise in the county to determine the feasibility, and by feasibility I mean the potential profitability of an educational ag uh, Agricultural ag educational center or the high school for education. Um, or to look at the feasibility of a marijuana dispensary. You know, do we, you think we have enough expertise in the county to do that? I don't know. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, good. Yeah. At the Malton Borough listening session, there was a representative that spoke at the beginning of that session. Yeah. He has made contact, he's... Glenn Cordelli, Representative yeah. Cordelli, yeah. yes. With a lot of the people involved with the education research portion of this. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, do we have enough uh, expertise in the area? I don't know about in the area, but if he could link us with the people he spoke with, Maybe we could. Well, you know, interesting. That's what I was wondering myself. I know last year, Mark, the, the delegation created a subcommittee looking at educational aspect care for the county lands. And if I remember, Representative Glenn Cordelli basically chaired that. I think you were on that committee, weren't yes. you? I know Representative Como was on that committee as well. So I was thinking, Maybe we should invite Glenn down here to talk to us about I, that. I, I, Do you have a report? Uh, no report. It's still ongoing. I sp I had um, I had a twenty minute conversation with Glenn two days ago. Okay. And he said he'd be more than happy Good. to fit it in. Yes, but I think we should invite. Him. Yeah. Why go out and, and reinvent something that he's already got? Yeah. So he, he's he's more than okay. Willing. Good. Ed, Good. Ed's worked a lot on this. Yeah. Too. Yeah. No. Be happy. So I think we've got a lot of that. As as I looked at the at the education thing here. Uh, 
that was a thought that came to my mind. There may be a lot of work on this that's already been done. Uh, and so let's tap that. Let's tap that resource. Well, then in that case, let's go through this list and figure out which things we know we can't handle. Okay. All right? Because then we just say, hey, we just put those aside and, yeah, exactly. and build that into an, a, yeah. a document for an RFP. Yeah. Because that'll help lay out our schedule. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, look, looking at this, there were, there were what, six items, six or seven items on the recreation. And we've already basically, either through people we've talked with or people we hope to have here on the 10th, we've already covered everything in that but the shooting range and hunting. So I think that looking at recreation, I think we can kind of check that out. Okay, we, 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 we're covering that. Okay, the conservation easement. Uh, I have talked with several people about conservation easements, one of them being Peter Pohl again. Uh, and, and unless I am really missing something there, I'm not so sure why we have to put a conservation easement on a feasibility study. I think we could do that in-house. I think there are enough people with expertise on conservation easements, the pros and cons. And so uh, my own feeling is unless I am missing something here, I don't need why no we have that has to be part of the cons the feasibility study. Is there anybody who disagrees well, you, with that? You might you might still have that as a minor check item on that, so someone else is overlooking that to make sure that if we do this, that it is truly in the collective best interest of everything else we want. Okay, to. but I don't think we need to bring no. in somebody that, yeah. that is oh, just oh. focused on oh, conservation. Okay, so interest. so that's so that, that might, that's two. You know, might be a small part. Yeah. Of that. Now the and let, let's just leave the other for the moment and let's get let's get the education. Okay, let's we'll invite Glenn in, and I think Glenn has a tremendous amount of information that he can share. And sure. at that point in time, we can make the decision. Okay, where do we want to go with this? Do we feel we have enough? Uh, we want to put that on the feasibility study. So I'm just going to put under education, I'm going to put Glenn. Well, can we put Glenn and whatever, Groups of people. whatever group of people he is talking with? Yes. Because okay. they might be good to bring yes. in well, too. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because it's just like anything else, yep. what are you willing to do here yep. for this education slash yep. research slash yep. for a really big tomato? Now what is interesting is Glenn and I, a couple weeks back, shared some emails, and I had passed on to him how I had talked with that uh, fellow who's the president of White Mountain Community College and the woman who, who, who basically heads the branch of North Conway. And they're very interested in really finding a way if they can get involved in this. And I shared that with Glenn, and Glenn says, hey, I've been doing the same thing myself with them. So, so, I, so again, we're working mm -hmm. parallel paths here. So when you say bring in others, I agree with you, Dale, and, and I think Glenn may be able to bring in others. What, what I'm saying is that as we get down through here and check off where we are and where we should be going next, I, I think education is pretty much under control as well, as far as we know who we want to bring in already. Uh, so then we get into agricultural production. We get tenant farming, hydro, aqu aquaphonic, grain production, sugar bush food hubs. Okay. That is an area, speaking again for myself, that is an area far more sophisticated than what I feel I can handle. Uh, and, and I think if we're going to be focusing on that, I personally, I would like to see somebody, somebody else doing that on a feasibility study. Comments? I, I know nothing, so. Okay. I'm a consumer. <laughs> okay. So, so on, on that, right at this moment, we're looking at that would be on the feasibility study. Okay, so now let's get back to other, because that kind of is the, that's, that's the miscellaneous, that was everything else <laughs> thrown into that. And we've got leasing, we've got gravel operation, with have got I mean, the, the, the list goes on. Uh, is, and that, Mark, refresh my memory, but you were going to be talking to some soil people and so forth, yes. and you felt that a lot of that we could get in-house already. I'm, mm -hmm. hoping, I'm hoping we can. Right, so when we look at soil, soil inventory, resource inventory, uh, wildlife corridors, do we feel comfortable that a lot of that we could we could do? I think, I think we'll yeah. pull that together. Yes. Okay. Now the solar farm. Okay. This leasing. I mean, this in a way is kind of no matter what we look at here. I mean, a lot of the other things we're talking about possible leasing. 
do we really need to do a feasibility study on, on leasing? No, no, that's, okay. that's sort of why it was there as a question. E exactly. Well, I think we can pull together leasing opportunities. Yes. yes. Well, without right. question. Yeah. It's whatever guidelines anyone yeah. who's in the know wants to follow. E exactly. Now, gravel operation, I know several times you've made reference to a gravel operation here. But the gravel is, is in my opinion, is going to be in the house. Yeah, ex exactly. So, it's again, for our own trails. Do we really we need go. to put that out? No. It's not going to be Coleman South. No. Thank you. <laughs> but it's, it's an area we should investigate. Yeah. The more yeah. material we can use ourselves. Exactly. And ask her cleaned up and made nice. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's all good stuff. And how long that would last? All right, solar farm. Now, the, the county is already looking at that. Would, would this be just basically duplication of effort for us to all of a sudden decide to study that? I don't want to assume anything, but isn't the county been looking at that for the last year or so? They are. They are. So do we need, again, to do a feasibility study on the, the pros and cons of solar? Mm -hmm. okay. No, but you can, again, if you are looking into a solar farm on this property, you're gonna have people fighting to put that solar farm here, I would assume. Everyone wants to put solar in large quantities, so you're gonna have people knocking on your door saying, yeah, this is what we need to do for a solar farm. And I think you can do the same thing with everything else. Whatever the best deal is for the county, I mean, the more information you can gather, the better you're gonna, the more educational, uh, the more information, the more educated you become on the topic, the better off you will be to make a decision as to what's best. My, my, my question is, Dale, is what we would be doing, would that just be a duplication of effort? I mean, I've, I've read that the commissioners are already, for the last day, have been looking at this, been, been talking with people, weighing the pros and cons, in fact, where they want to put it. I know today when we come in here, Amanda was saying, that she and Wendy had walked and they had found the perfect site somewhere else that they thought would be perfect for solar. So, I mean, I don't... But where is that? Is it where potentially <coughs> we could put something? Is it potentially on... I mean, we're not talking one or two panels here. We're talking oh, a large no, no, amount we're talking of land. Supplying for the, for the county. So for, is it taking away buildings. from the agricultural end? Is it taking away from the research end? Is it taking away from a horse trail? Is it taking away from something? So again, I think whoever is doing that, just like Mark is involved in the educational research subcommittee, I think whoever is doing the solar farm research should there, there should be shared information there. So we're not walking on each other's feet. It might not be both of us going out to get different companies to come in and want to put solar up, but just to make sure we're not stepping on their toes and they're not stepping on ours of what we want to do as opposed to what they want to do. So are you proposing then that this should be included in the feasibility study? No, no, what I'm saying <laughs> is okay. that it, uh, should be it should be discussed uh -huh. so we can be better educated to where, what, when, and why. Well, well no, that, well, I, I thought that what we were doing now was going through these things and, and basically defining what needs to be on the feasibility study and what we're going to be doing in-house. So. I'm not saying that therefore we're not going to, we're going to ignore that, but what I think I'm saying is that we can do it in-house, which is why I asked the question, so therefore you're thinking it should be part of the feasibility study, and you're saying no, it isn't. No, I just wanted to talk to you myself talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you succeeded. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, same thing. I, I don't want to, just because, I don't want to see him crossed off. Right. You know, it's just, it's, it's not on the list of where we think the feasibility is. Yes. Going, but I, I want us to be able to always have this list out there in our conversation. So. Exactly, and, and, if, and if I've somehow conveyed that, therefore, by not including this in the feasibility study, we're gonna forget it, then I, then I want to stand mm -hmm. correct that that was not my intent at all. I think, I thought what we're going through was saying, okay, what should be part of the feasibility study, and what do we think we can do in-house? Yeah, and yeah, Mark said that way more eloquently than I did. <laughs> uh, much I, less you're areas. not saying next to Andy with big, bold strikeouts across the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is what has me concerned. Okay. It's gone. Are we on the same page here? <laughs> yes. 
All right. Event venue. But what's an event venue? Is that having big things going on here, snowmobile races and stuff like that? Oh, what's an event venue? It could be a concert. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Horse show. Um, okay. All right. Flood right. dog race. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, feasibility study? No. I don't say no. No. Okay. <laughs> I will say, however, that most groups that I am even vaguely familiar with would probably want access to water and electricity. Okay. That's about the only thing that I know that they really want. Given to almost anyone. Enough parking area. Yeah, yeah I can see parking uh, being an issue. Level enough area for a tent and uh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, I can see parking being a, a real issue here. But certain times of the year, open fields that yeah. aren't being hay. Yeah. Would be very, very yeah. attractive. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, what about the next one on the list? Medical marijuana dispensary. Okay. Flesh that out for me a little bit here. There was a <laughs> suggestion made during one of the I'm listening sessions. A couple times. A couple times. Um, I think the one that, that went with it was uh, growing hemp. Uh huh. Or related, I should say. Um, Isn't the number of those dispensaries fixed by the state? I don't know. Maybe Mark or Ed would be in a better position to come in on that. Than I believe right now the law says four. In, in the state? But don't quote me on it. I think it's four. And how many course, do we have? Be changed. How many do we I have already? We have, four. we have already four. Are these going to be under the, under the state state auspices? Like in a liquor store or something like that? Well, yeah. They are, but... That's who, that's who regulates it. It's the location of them that people complain about because they're so far away from the people that need it. Yeah. They just yeah. forget it. It's not, it, it doesn't behoove them to go all the way down to wherever they had to go to get it. Okay. So. So that is one topic that I think Oh, I don't know enough about it. Um, do we have enough expertise in our local area to discuss that? For I, a, I could have somebody in this meeting, the next meeting, to discuss that, or whatever meeting you want. Okay, all right. Do we need to put that on an RFP? We could have the conversation. Let's have the conversation yeah, first. Yeah, I, I'm with Mark. Let's yeah. have the conversation yeah. first. Okay. Might make a good jelly or jam. It might. Yeah. I'll bet it would. <laughs> I, I missed that one. He's a private side comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Water system expansion. That's at the county level here. You know, I think that's the way that was recorded. And I think that came from the first listening session yeah. and I believe it was because of something that my husband said and what he <laughs> meant was protection of the waters aquifer okay all right all right so it was it was aquifer protection yes but water system expansion is a conversation it's there are plenty of and people it should that, be yeah, yeah plenty of people don't have water right? yeah uh, you know, a, a well, a drilled well up here is sixteen to twenty thousand dollars. If you're mm -hmm. down, if you're down in the lower areas where you have sand, that's four to six thousand dollars with a well point. So, and in the village, you know, they definitely have to have a water system. So, I, I, I thought it was a good idea. I don't know, you know, where the need is or whatever, but you know, maybe it comes down to just a, a public hearing if there are people that want to, you know. The county were to expand, would it make sense, or you know, do they have interest? I don't know. Do they have? 
Is there a large amount of people, private citizens, on this water system now, There's, or is a handful? I'm, or? I'm thinking it's something like 50 people, Ed, 35, 50 people on the uh, county uh, water on the system. system. Yeah. The village it's, system. It's the village. I can't tell you the number. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I believe it's less than 100 hookups at this point. And is there room in this current system for expansion? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Would that, I guess the question is, as far as this conversation goes, would, would there be enough uh, in-house expertise on that to answer these questions? Well, you have you have a water operator here in Will. Okay. Yeah. We could bring them in and have a conversation. Okay, okay. The question for me would be, does that fall under our scope of what we're trying to do here? That's a good question. Oh, would that be more of a, of a probably, county? Probably not. But is there the opportunity in the water system the way it is that we could get water to in a vet venue and some mm -hmm. of these other things? What would it take to tap off of our system and can we do it? So in that, that case, yes. a little further down the road, then we'd have that conversation. Okay. If you wanted to do tenant farming, they want water. Yes, yeah, 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 very much so. Yeah. 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 And if you're talking about hydro or aquaponic agriculture, they definitely need water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the food hub would. Um, so for the time being, though, let's start that with the discussion with Will. Yeah. Okay. We'll put him in. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'd, I'd I'd wait a while so we find out some other things that maybe we could talk to him about. That. Okay. All right. Maybe the water system expansion should be something brought to the commissioners. And the soil inventory, resource inventory, and so forth, we are already... We're going to work on that. Yeah. Right. So, so that, right at this point in time, would not be on the, the bad to the feasibility study. Okay. Okay. And education, basically, we're going to be talking with Glenn and others. And what we decided is that, as far as the production agricultural, that at least for the moment, that will probably be on the feasibility study. So, basically, what we've done is we've gone through it all. Good. So we're done now? <laughs> don't, don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we've done is, hmm. as I understand it, identified yeah. some areas of focus for the feasibility study. Right. Yes. And, you know, and there's nothing that says, is after looking in-house in and gathering information and some of the things under other mm -hmm. that we may feel that the information we've gathered is too limited and we may want to add them to the feasibility right. study. But what we're saying right now is that at this point in time, let's just start discussing these with others and see where we are. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all right. Next item on the agenda is other business. Anything else? Our next meeting is two weeks. Two so weeks in, from the tenth. On the tenth, right? Yeah. And that's when we're going to be bringing in hopefully all those people that we're in touch with, and maybe others to discuss basically the, 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 the trail system, the non-motorized trail, the non-motorized trail system. Are we going to subsequently talk with people about motorized trails? I, I think it would be a mistake if we didn't at least talk to them. What, what was the big deal? Uh, I'm relaying a message I received that uh, High Meadow Stable, yep. uh, they will not be able to be here on the 10th, but she wants to be involved. Sue wants to be involved. Okay. Are they down in Wakefield? Or? I have no idea. What's the one down here almost on the Freedom Line? And was it Burnt Meadows? Burnt Meadows. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. But this is another stable. I would assume it's down that direction. Okay. Somewhere. All right. Well, if somebody wants to get involved, we don't want to discourage oh, that. They can't be here on the 10th, but they do want to be involved as far as the horse aspect. Of okay. It. All right. Just All right. received. All right. You got Twitter followers? What do you got on? Of course I do. Yeah, the, um, one of the folks I had spoken with about the trails is 
she goes out almost every weekend trail riding, she and her fam whole family. Uh -huh. And she said there's a real need for it in this area. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, she, last weekend they were over in Lovell, Maine. Because, you know, the yeah. group get together and. Okay. Anything else? Any other business? What have we missed here? A motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept second. that. Is there a second? All right. I'll second. I'll All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I will see you on the 10th. Yes, sounds great. Okay. If I can start with that. Okay. So for those. Well, the gift tax, by the way.